moist. 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 If you are uncomfortable with me saying moist so much, congratulations, you're one of the 10 to 20% of people who find that word revolting. Psychologists call that disagreeable feeling word aversion, where seemingly innocent words trigger our disgust. And while it might seem silly to spend time wondering why moist makes us cringe, it's not. What we find disgusting can be a big part of who we are. Researchers have linked the targets of our disgust and how strongly we feel the emotion to everything from whether we choose to be vegetarian to our political leanings. Even our senses of morality and justice are intrinsically tied to what we find disgusting. It's a powerful emotion. When you feel disgusted by something, your heart rate slows, you might get a little nauseated, and you tend to withdraw or even recoil from whatever offended you. The yuck feeling is also written all over your face. Like other basic emotions, happiness and anger, for example, the facial expression of disgust is universal. It's an emotion that all humans evolved to show the same way. Biologists think disgust evolved to help protect us from disease, which makes sense if you consider what tends to disgust us. Bodily fluids, rotten foods, slimy things, even bugs could be packed with dangerous microbes just looking for a way into our deliciously vulnerable bodies. Since we want to keep that grossness away from us, we're naturally inclined to do things that make our lives more hygienic, like keep our toilets away from our kitchens. And it pays off. Studies have shown that people who are easily disgusted are less likely to catch an infectious disease. But if disgust is meant to protect us, why is the word moist so disgusting? A word can't harbor bacteria or pass along a parasite. It has a lot to do with how much time we spend around other people. We humans are social creatures, which is nice, but it's also a great way to spread disease. Since our interactions with others affect our risk of infection, it wasn't too much of a stretch for our brains to co-opt disgust for social contexts, including the language we use. Which brings us back to moist. Moist. People hate that word so much that psychologists have done some pretty specific research trying to figure out why. In a paper published in the journal PLOS One in 2016, researchers identified three main ways that moist could trigger disgust, and ran a series of experiments with hundreds of participants to figure out which one of those three made moist so repulsive. I'm so sorry to the 10 to 20 percent of you. I'm not even done either. The first possibility is that moist is just gross to say, whether because of what the word sounds like or because of the shape your face makes when you say it. That's what people who found the word moist disgusting seemed to think. About half of them connected their revulsion to the way it sounds. Moist, that like oi and then the st. Sounds unpleasant, kind of, right? Moist. But oddly enough, people who had no problem with moist didn't think it was the sound that sets people off. They were much more likely to think the word's connotation was its most disgusting trait. The team also wondered if the disgust had to do with the shape our faces made when we say the word, because some researchers think the connection between our emotions and facial expressions is a two-way street. When we feel emotions, our faces contort accordingly. But the reverse could also be true. If we smile, or frown, that could make us happy or sad. And think about how your lips move in the last part of the word moist. Oist. It's kind of like similar to the iconic blech, like that face. Ugh. Moist. The problem is, if our disgust comes from the sound of the word or the face we make when we say it, you would expect similar words to also trigger revulsion, but the researchers didn't find strong evidence for that. People who cringed at moist were more sensitive to words like foist and rejoiced, but they didn't make the subjects viscerally ill in the same way that moist did. So if it's not the word itself, then it must be something we associate with it. And that's the second possible reason the researchers looked into, whether people hate the word moist because it's associated with other disgusting things. They found that moist-averse people rated words like phleb, puke, and vomit more negatively, suggesting that they associated with bodily functions. But they also found evidence for a third reason, that the distaste left behind saying moist comes from cultural influences rather than something about the word itself. In one of the experiments, subjects either watched a super cringy video of people trying to say moist in a sexy way, a neutral video that just referred to moist cake a bunch of times, or 
no video at all. People who saw the cringy video suddenly found the word more disgusting, and compared to other participants, they said they used it less often. Based on the results of all of their experiments, the researchers concluded that Moist's ew factor comes from both its connection to bodily fluids and the fact that others are grossed out by it. In the end, it may not really matter if moist or other gross words like crevice or panties bother you, but studies like this can help psychologists learn more about what triggers disgust, which is important because it's connected with how we think about other people. Avoiding things that might get you sick in a social context isn't that simple, and it's influenced by our experiences in the culture we live in. For example, people can be disgusted by things that would otherwise seem random because of negative childhood experience or because they've been told that they should be disgusted by them. So disgust can help mold individual values and biases. And there are times we might want to fight back against our automatic responses. Avoiding people who are sick could mean that we're sort of programmed to push people away when they need us most. And the urge to avoid the sick can go too far and end up stigmatizing people with certain illnesses or who otherwise don't look perfectly healthy. Plus, disgust doesn't stop with visible signs of sickness. We might instinctively want to avoid unfamiliar groups because our brains think they could expose us to diseases our immune systems aren't equipped to fight, even if that's not actually true, which can reinforce tribalism and all kinds of other problems. And those are just some of the ways disgust can drive our manners and social norms or affect our senses of morality and justice. Bet you didn't think we were going to go here in a video about the word moist. A big part of psychology aims to understand how basic emotions influence our our thoughts and behaviors, and it turns out our disgust with the word moist can tell us a lot about ourselves. Thank you for making it through this entire episode of SciShow Psych, despite the number of times I said moist. It was so many times. If you are interested in learning more weird things about our brains, Boy, do we have a lot of episodes already in this not very long time that we've been making SciShow Psych. You can go to youtube.com slash scishow psych and subscribe. Thank you to all of you who have already done that. We have loved watching this channel grow. 